So, I have been in the field of teaching for over 30 years, and it has evolved in many ways. The use of data to inform decision-making and the teaching to standards are two particularly salient trends. Yet I fear sometimes that we can get so busy counting and codifying, aligning and assessing, that we can forget to look. This is not my favorite children's book. This is. As it's one of the most translated books in the world, according to Wikipedia, I'm clearly not alone in this sentiment. The author, like his narrator, was an aviator, albeit one who never lived to see his story published, as his plane disappeared while flying a reconnaissance mission against Hitler's tyranny during World War II. For those of you who aren't familiar with this children's book, an intrepid universe-traveling prince meets our narrator, whose plane had recently crashed in the Sahara Desert. The little man, as the narrator refers to him, had come from a faraway asteroid where he had tired of caring for a vain and often demanding rose. So after this, the young and wise soul recounts his numerous meetings with single-minded characters scattered among the planets and asteroids, each so sure they knew what matters most. And ultimately, during his travels, the little prince is dismayed to encounter a whole garden of roses that look exactly like the one he had believed to be so unique and special in all the universe. So he struggles with this paradox of his longing for a particular flower that by all appearances is just one in a statistical multiplicity. But then he meets a fox who helps him to understand a powerful truth. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. So how, as teachers, can we see rightly? This we already know. We simply call forth our own greatest mentors, those who loved us as their own unique rose. And we will find that in each and every case, central to their gift was their ability to stay present and watch for our own particular beingness. And from that place of attending, they could respond most productively to cover us with a glass globe in inclement weather, to leave us open to the elements when we were strong enough, to take the time to gently water us with kindness, to protect us from untimely threats that we were not yet strong enough to bear. But most important of all, to witness. To listen behind and underneath the words and the behaviors. To encourage each tender, fledgling approximation to celebrate an ephemeral time in an all-so-fleeting childhood. And in so doing, see, and by extension, teach rightly. 
Now, these photos have been of younger children, yet this truth is, if anything, even more important to acknowledge with tweens and teens. I'd like to share with you the following research by Search Institute, and I'm going to give you a moment to read it. To be a teacher is to wield unfathomable power. All students, fragile or resilient, academically apt or struggling with learning challenges, behaviorally skilled or emotionally insecure, show up at our doors wearing their full vulnerability on their sleeves. May we be there for each and every one of them. Thank you. <laughs>